All right, well, thank you so much uh, for joining us. We have an alumni DJ with us today who was one of our station managers in the past. Um, so hello, how are you doing? I'm doing great, how about you? Doing well, doing well. Thank you so much for joining us today, Rick. I really appreciate it. Um, so when were you active with WUSC? Okay, so I started at WUSC in, um, it was really January 1982. Two. I came down to um, South, South Carolina from Maryland. Uh, my freshman year started fall of 81. So that first semester, I was just trying to get my, you know, bearings on what I liked at Carolina. And I wasn't, I went through the fraternity rush. I was, wasn't for me, you know. And I heard that there was a radio station. And so that, that like right after New Year's, I, I went up there for a meeting and I really liked what I saw. So I joined the radio station. So it was January 82 and I was up there until May um, 85. Yeah, that's a, that's a good long run then. Um, so what was your DJ name and your show name? Okay, so I was the Muffin Man um, my show was called Purple Lagoon, so I basically took over the reggae show that was on and um, changed the name of it. And um, that was, I was doing a lot of late night, like 3 a.m. shifts for a little while that first um, semester. By the, but by the summer, I wanted to stay in Columbia. I, I didn't want to go back home to my parents. So that summer I took over the reggae show and from there on out, I did the, uh, that was my main show. It was on Thursdays at uh, 9 p.m. till midnight. That's awesome. I just um, spoke with Brent Riley a little bit earlier um, and he was mentioning, oh yes, I fell in love with this reggae show at WUSC. So, um, and he's from just around here as well, so. Okay, great. I guess. <laughs> yeah, there's fun stuff. I had longer hair curly and you know i talked like a rastafarian on the show <laughs> <laughs> i ray man rastafari it's the muffin man <laughs> three hours of spiritual reggae let's start it off with some bar more so anyway i actually started off with uh, uh there was a song augustus pablo probably don't know who he is but there's a lot of instrumental dub music, I did a lot of dub, dub, you know, everybody was stoned, so they loved the dub music. <laughs> Black Uhuru was really big back then, so it was UB40 was just starting. Of course, Bob Marley, everybody wanted to hear Bob Marley, so we played tons of Bob Marley and Steel Pulse. Steel Pulse was great, you know, so. And I had um, Yellow Man and Eka Mouse, were some guests I had, you know, on the show. Wow. They, they were big back then. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I mean, I, I definitely feel those late nights when I started. I had midnight to 2 a.m., um, Friday night, Saturday morning. Of course. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Um, <laughs> I'm glad now to not be in that. <laughs> it's nice well, what, to it, it's a, you got to start somewhere. They don't want to put you on the radio when you don't sound good and, you know, and you don't know how to run the, you know, systems. Um, that, that was my main show. I, I, but because I, had, I was actually the music director for two years uh, and then station manager. So I got much more knowledgeable as time went by on what we had. And, um, you know, I also did a show. We started the show on friday at 3 p.m that would introduce all the brand new music to our listeners it was called the first cut and it was on from three to six so i did that show too so i had a totally different show so i went from like real laid back to a little bit more upbeat and played a lot of you know what was the really kind of popular tunes from you know what was available a great example big country just came out so they saw that in a big country. And so that wasn't on top 40 radio. So we play stuff like that. And so it had more of a poppy feel to it, you know, and it's a Friday after Friday afternoon. So, you know, a lot of people are listening to that too. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So what do you think, um, kind of stepping onto the executive board um, via that 
music direction position and then again as the station manager how do you think that's sort of that ended up shaping your time at Carolina um, and then what do you think you've learned that you wouldn't have been able to learn anywhere else from it oh well first of all you know unless you go into radio from college radio it's it's probably one of the best experiences you'll ever have in your life you know and I miss it you know now music director when I was music director we started as a 10 watt radio station and in my um late sophomore junior year we had we had some really great people on the radio that were very um forward thinking and they had lobbied to have the radio station go up in power to 3000 watts so we went from like just a campus station to like where we could be heard 20 and 30 miles away so it's really a big deal uh, because we had much more influence on the local music scene once we went up in power and i was music director when that happened so the amazing amount of um, attention we got from the record companies back then, you know, it was, it was amazing. We, we, we literally were having people, you know, wine and dine us to get REM more attention or 10,000 maniacs or the red hot chili peppers. And I mean, the red hot chili peppers stayed in my apartment after like the show in Columbia, you know, they were like not big back then. We were, <laughs> We were promoting them. We had Michael Stipe from R.E.M. up at the station all the time. He was a regular at WUSC in the 80s. They played the Russell House Ballroom uh, with the English beat, you know, had the English beat. We, we, um, we pulled off some amazing things. We had um, Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden, the lead singer for Iron Maiden, was up at the radio station, and they played the Carolina Coliseum back then. And because we had so much power all of a sudden, we had these major stars like coming to Columbia and they would get up in Carolina Coliseum with 12,000 people and say, you know, there's only one radio station in Columbia, South Carolina worth listening to. And it was like, WUSC. It's like the whole, t you know, like there we were, the college station was being uh, um, promoted to like the mass market. And we often thought we uh, were getting Arbitron rated whether we didn't you know officially but we were having a, an impact so to have that kind of experience in college you know was you know phenomenal i could walk into any bar or restaurant and people knew who i was like i was some sort of superstar and i wasn't even the big star we had people that were huge like dredge slug uh, carl sigmaster who later started manifest distant tapes he had the number one like well, the one show in town, it, the phone ran off the hook with his heavy metal, massive metal show. Um, you know, we, we uh, Frank Kane, who's on um, X, uh, WXY, was it, was it XRY? Mm -hmm. the commercials for XRY, he's a good friend of mine. Frank did Blast from the Past. It was an oldies show on 50s and 60s music of not really hit music that was so popular these and, and many other shows too but they were just we just had a huge influence and that in turn i mean i got to meet like i would when i was station manager i was meeting with the president of the university of south carolina like the media you know all the um student leadership you know i, I get to be involved with the student leadership at usc i actually dated his daughter <laughs> a little bit you know who i was from baltimore i, I knew nothing i came down to carolina and i had this ter terrific career there um i actually you know in a way have regrets of being station manager because i was music director two years and i everybody knew me and all the record companies were always calling me you know and they knew they could get some help with their uh, people and in turn we'd have a lot of shows come to town and interviews we always got interviews station identification from all these bands you know it was great uh and when you became station manager you kind of didn't get to do that anymore you had to run the radio station it was a totally different job managing people making sure the air talent was on our big goal was to make sure the station was on 24 hours a day you didn't listen to it and there was no station it was on 24 hours a day now we had times where we had blips and we had people that djs that would let us down but that was the goal and um so for a student-run station we 
we were actually ranked in the top 20 of university stations in the country. Top 20, just like football ratings or anything else. It was a magazine called the CMJ um, Magazine. It was a, and it was actually at a convention called the College Music Journal. And, um, you know, we attended and and my experience was so good that I had I actually got asked to be moder a moderator up there. Where I, so I was moderating a panel and it had like Michael Stipe on the panel talking about how to break college bands into top 40 bands and stuff. And I was the moderator. Um, so that experience almost, I could never re get it repeated in life, you know, cause I'm, I'm not getting paid much, but I'm doing some amazing things. And all the bars and restaurants that the bars that put on live music, you know, they all knew us and they really were anxious to get, you know, a gig that would be promoted on WUSA. They didn't need the other radio stations because we had enough pool to, to get a thousand people to a show. If we got behind it, you, you could have as many as a thousand people at the show. It was oh, pretty neat. So awesome. That's so it was awesome. pretty neat. Uh, Black Flag, Oingo Boingo, Meat Puppets from the 80s. Um, I mean, you could go, it's so many, so many bands, you know, I can't even remember all of them, honestly. We, we're constantly promoting stuff. That was our whole goal. Almost every week we had something we were promoting. That's so, crazy. We're, <laughs> our, our goal really now is to, is to have a good concert every month or so. Um, but I mean, it's it's just hard right now, especially with COVID. We've had to move everything online. Um, and the, unfortunately, there have been so many other amazing developments um, nationwide in terms of music. So Columbia's getting a little smaller and smaller in terms of the music scene. But I mean, there's still some amazing stuff around here that, um, you know, we, we try and promote as much as we can. But I, I wish we had um, more that we could be doing in terms of those concerts. Well, I have a little story about local music so um you know we didn't want to put anything that was local on the radio that wasn't playing original music and believe it or not that towards the tail end of my tenure there hootie and the blowfish came up to the radio station and gave me a tape and i believe at the time it was just like doors covers or top 40 music I, I, it's so long though. And my friend Art Burke, who's the late Art Burke, he was my program director. And um, we didn't put them on the radio back then. Now I know later, once we graduated, they had original stuff. And they started, WSC helped get Hooting the Blowfish started. And Rockefellers, which was the great club, that's now Jake's, was really instrumental, but you know, my ex-wife would kid, would kid me, like, yeah, you had a great, great vision there. But I'm like, well, we stuck to what we said. We're not putting any top 40 stuff on the radio. Doesn't matter. You know, give me a tape with top 40 music on it. You know, it's not going on WUSA. Yeah, and, um, but later on, you know, here would be the Blowfish really put Columbia on the map. There were lots of bands from Columbia. Um, so, and Columbia's had some really good times at times where there's been really great local music. And we had a show that just promoted local music too. We, we were big on it. We tried to promote all the local bands if we could um, and have them up at the radio station for interviews. You know, we loved live interviews. We, as much as, if I could get, that was another one of my goals, get the live interview. We want the live interview. And um, I remember I interviewed Natalie Merchant from 10,000 Maniacs, right? She's the lead singer for 10, she's a kid. She's like 19 years old. She was so shy. And um, there used to be a bar called Green Streets. Uh, that's where like, sort of like where the Office Max is now or where the Chick-fil-A is in Five Points. There used to be a Green Streets was over there. And um, she was so shy, she couldn't even look at the crowd. She, was, she, she faced her back to the crowd for the Ooh, show awesome. mostly. She was so shy back then. But, um, you know, and the late Art Burke, who was my program director and, and my dear friend back then, um, who did a punk show, actually, Raucous Waves, he ended up 
working over at Rockefeller's with another friend of mine from the radio station, Derek Chiarenza, who still lives in Columbia, Dr. Eek. And, and, and they booked, they really put Columbia on the map. They, they started booking music that was na like national acts coming through Rockefeller's all the time. You know, it was a tremendous. I, I wasn't really involved with that, unfortunately. I ended up meeting somebody who I married and I kind of got out of the scene. But um, anyways, it was, it, I would have to say the experience of working at a college radio station and being involved in promoting music that later became huge, huge stars was probably the best experience, you know, of my life. I mean, we, we went down to Atlanta and we interviewed, Bono, we interviewed Bono from U2 and, and um, the Red Rocks were the opening act over the Omni, which doesn't exist anymore, but Art and I interviewed Bono. And um, I was up in DC interviewing the Violent Femmes, you know, and the Cramps and the Cramp, lead singer from the Cramps had a freaking snake wrapped around them. <laughs> <laughs> in a room with a, you know, with a snake, you know, interviewing them. Um, we had the exploited up at WSC. They had like blue mohawks straight up. I had a really good relationship with people from Polygram and A and M Records and Warner Brothers and Atlantic. You know, yeah, you know, who had that in college? Nobody. Yeah, no, the connections that we're able to make through this are just absolutely phenomenal. Like, we've had um, passes to Music Midtown in Atlanta, we had High yeah. Walk in Charleston, and those are just to name just the start. <laughs> it's fantastic. That's, a, it's like, but it's also, it's fantastic, and it has sort of a um, unrealistic piece to it, too, because what happens is you graduate and my goal was I wanted to work for a record company when I got out and it probably made the mistake of becoming station manager. It wasn't a mistake, but it, it led me off my path. And then when I tried to get a job, I, I, I had been unconnected from the music promoters for a year and they didn't see me like as somebody they wanted to hire. It was super hard and disappointing, but actually John Van Sinners, Johnny Fish, ended up, he was after me. He was a music director after me. He actually got a job finally promoting, you know, uh, music with the record companies for a while. And now I think he does something like with, you know, the movie business like Star Wars and stuff. So anyway, it was a great experience. I, I always say, often say now, if I could make a living doing the same thing I was doing in 1982 to 85, which is working on 40 years now, ridiculous. I would, I would do it in a second because it's the best, it was really what, the best time of my life as far as having fun, doing something I was passionate about, loved. And, you know, I'm in finance now. I've been an investment advisor and banker. And it's, it's just, you know, it's like the real job. I went and got a real job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the culture that we have at the station is just so laid back and just, always yeah. just do what makes you happy and and have fun and all that so it's it's something that i know eventually my time here is going to come to an end and i'm sad when that happens that comes. all i can tell you is enjoy the heck out of it while you're in it um if you can actually stay in that business somehow god bless you <laughs> you know um because it's hard i, I met a gal at carolina from Columbia and I met her at a little bar called The Beat. It was like an 80s, like, you know, dance bar. And I ended up staying with her. And unfortunately, by doing that, it made it very hard for me. I'm like, you know, I had to, I ended up in Columbia. We did go to Atlanta, but she missed Columbia. And you can't be in the music business really, like as a career, it's very difficult. And you're in Columbia, you need to go to New York, you know, LA, you know, at least Atlanta, Nashville, somewhere big, um, to put yourself, you know, close to what's ha the pulse of the music business. Absolutely. Columbia just has a little teeny, you know, uh, little teeny thing happening there. And Columbia's gotten better. It's grown a ton. I mean, when I first got down, there was only like 200,000 people in Columbia. The whole Columbia metro area now is like 700,000, you know. 
Richland, Lexington County and surrounding areas has got a lot of people now. And, and really WSC could be, you know, I don't, it could be still huge, you know, if, if it wanted to be, but WSC can take you places that you've never been before. Oh, it really can. <laughs> it really can. <laughs> There's some power there. I actually had an opportunity to sit down with Mark Bryan um, from who oh, not too long ago. So he um, came back for World College Radio Day. We did a little sit down um, and he shared all his experiences of Styles Bitchley and his show and all that. And, and same thing with, uh, with Jake's down there. And I did, I don't even, you know, I don't think he knows me vaguely, you know, cause he really knew Art, you know, my friend Art Burke, but you know, and I know Mark had a show but he was, I think he started to get on there late 85 and I had graduated in spring 85. I just missed all that, unfortunately. It's very, very um, ironic that that all happened, but that, what a wonderful thing for WSC to help with. And he was on there, so instrumental. And look how big they, they become, yeah. you know? Huge, they're huge. Mark went on to do great things with um, College of Charleston, got um, the sister in there started up and, and all that so they're still online um as an online station but he's got he he really ran with with wusc and, and took it as far as he could yeah i mean and and that's the thing if you get passionate people we had a group that was really passionate i mean we were determined and passionate we wanted to be the number one radio station and we listened to you know i paid very close attention to wug which I don't know if that's the letters now, that was the Athens station. Yeah, and of course, Athens was like the center of the universe back then for college music, you know, REM, B-52s, um, Let's Active, I believe was from there. Mitch, oh, I forgot his last name, Mitch Ryder. Just some really good, the DBs, I think were from Athens. And they just always had cool music there, you know. Uh, Atlanta did too. Atlanta actually had uh, Georgia State had a good station. Clemson did not. Clemson <laughs> State was bull crap. So we always still, I don't know what they're like now, but to this day, we're like, oh, we got to be on radio at least. <laughs> and um, University of South Carolina radio station, you could be an individual, you know, you can express yourself. And we all got, we had all the kind of out of the box people. We had a, the, we had this guy, Mysterioso Obscura, <laughs> and, Billy, and Billy Brainstem, and they basically did a show, and he played music like backwards and played two records at one time, and then did like funny comedy stuff over it. It was like, you had to listen to it. It was, the, it was just fun and funny. We just, you know, it was a great time for music too. The 80s, you know, that was a great, that was a great time for what was coming out. And of course, when they got big and popular, you know, we stopped playing all that U2 stuff, you know, because they weren't as cool anymore. And we branched off into other stuff. And that was, it was always something else coming out. And that first cut show was so much fun because some of the things I would play there on Friday night, sure enough, when six months came by, they were on like a WNOK, you know, you could tell the big countries and stuff like that, with all, the cure or, would all of a sudden be on, you know, NOK. Uh, in Excess. We played In Excess way before it was on uh, Top 40. Way before. So, uh, anyway, good times. And uh, I always love music. I love not live music. I feel like most of my brain at this point is just like music and song lyrics. And it's like, where did this even come from? But, you know, I wouldn't really have it any other way. And so, you got to be careful because the average person at Carolina, they don't know all this stuff. Mm -hmm. you know, maybe more now because of the internet. I think probably people are musically broadened by the internet, but they're still, you know, very limiting. And I, I have to be careful about the type of music I listen to. For I fear that people thought I was weird. You know, <laughs> I'm weird. Um, but the reggae show was fun because. Uh, more, Bob Marley was already gone though when I, he had already passed away when I was on the radio, sadly. Yeah, if you had to sum up WUSC in one word, what do you think it would be? I'd say 
innovative and special because you're not limited by what commercial radio makes you, most commercial stations do. You're not limited. Your limitation is your imagination. I mean, you know, nobody's shutting you down. As long as you're not cussing incessantly on the radio, if you keep it clean and you're not playing like propaganda, you know, death stuff that like could start a revolution. I mean, if you're just keeping it clean and you can do, the sky's the limit. You want to do show tunes? Like I know there was, just, we never had it, but you could do movie soundtracks or play records backwards. You know, you could, you could do a show that's just nothing but rap or talk or, um, you know, um, you can do stuff that heals the world if you wanted to, you know, um, yeah, but I'm, you're really just you're limited by your imagination. So I'd say it's a wonderful creative way to express yourself on, on a, in a forum that people can listen to. Yeah, I'm, I love how diverse our program grid has has gotten. Um, I know it took a little dip into indie, but we've kind of bounced back. We've got a lot of good shows this semester as well. Um, we've got new DJs coming in all the time as well. So that's bringing more new perspectives, new music with them, all that. So yeah, I just, it's it's definitely a good time to to, you know, to get that turnover as bad as it is for other places i think it really keeps us fresh um so i'm just yeah it's good experience and you meet a lot of interesting people you never know who you're going to meet through wsc that's going to be instrumental in your career or maybe get married i mean whatever um and um the things i learned there have stuck with me i'll never forget i had my father up there and he like fell asleep watching me um but I later became like an investment advisor where I can communicate well with people. And I told them all the time, I said, you know, you didn't really support me with all the radio stuff. You thought it was stupid and a waste of time, but it really wasn't because you learned a lot. We learned a lot about fundraising, you know, promotion, marketing, you know, how all that works. And there's a lot of basic concepts that you can use in many different careers, business owners, businesses you own. So, you're young, so you kind of learn those basic, you know, tools that you use at the radio for the rest of your life, honestly. So great experience. If I could do it all over again, I probably would have fought my way to stay on 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 the radio in some way or TV. Um, so, but hindsight's twenty twenty. It is. Glad, it is. Glad, glad I got to do it. You know, that's all. And I uh, actually have pictures, you know, we have a WSC alumni, you know, thing on Facebook, right? And we post pictures from back then. Frank Kane's really involved with that, you know, he loves doing that. So you're only limited by your own creativity. I would write, I would read like Rasta poetry. <laughs> you know? so funny. So, and sometimes, you know, like in the reggae show, it would get boring to just do reggae. So I would have a ska hour. You know, it would be ska music or it would be a sort of uh, Latino, you know, kind of stuff. We'd throw that in there a little bit and spice it up a bit. And, um, you know, whatever creativity you could do. It was good times. I really miss it. You know? Yeah. Well, thank you so much for, you know, sitting down and taking the time out of your day to chat about your experiences as, um, you know, the station manager and music director and, and all here. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's definitely fun to be able to, you know, reach out to our alumni and, and get that, you know, perspective and see how the station's changed over the times. Definitely. Changes some, but it's the same some too, so. Thank you so, so much. Uh, I, I wish you the best of luck, okay? Thank you so Enjoy. much.